Hello friends, Arsenal are set to make the signing of Jorginho. However, I've heard a lot of Arsenal fans be quite unhappy with this deal, unhappy about the circumstances surrounding it. Join me today as we go through why I think this makes a lot of sense and why I actually think it's a very, very good deal for Arsenal. If you enjoyed the video, please leave it with a like and subscribe if you haven't for more content like this coming very soon. Make sure you hit that notification bell as well so that you never ever miss an upload. You don't want to miss what's coming up in the near future. And and now, let's talk about why I think Jorginho to Arsenal makes sense. I think we're all aware on who Jorginho is, but just in case you're not, let me run through a couple of things with you. He's a 31-year-old Italian central defensive midfielder, and he comes from Chelsea, who are willing to now let him go. The fee to let him leave is rumoured to be around £12 million, which isn't too much indeed. But how exactly would he fit into this Arsenal side, and why would it be such a good move? Let's have a look. Okay, this is Jorginho in the Arsenal team. I've got Arsenal set up as they normally would be in their 4 3 3 formation. I haven't got any other Arsenal players in this side because I just want to focus on Jorginho and the role that he could play in this Arsenal team. When we have a look at it, Jorginho's best asset to Arsenal actually is the way that he will seamlessly transition into this role. It's not going to be a learning process. He's not a new player who needs to understand the system. He's very clever at what he does. And actually, the role that I believe Mikel Arteta wants him to play is one that he's very, very used to. It's the similar role that he plays at Chelsea and he's played before at Napoli, that holding, sitting defensive midfielder, essentially a backup for Thomas Partey. And when we think about how Jorginho plays and how Thomas Partey plays, he's actually very, very similar. What's going to be asked of him? He's going to be asked to move and shuffle across to both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, seeking out and snuffing out danger, helping this Arsenal side to really maintain possession and allow them to control the ball. That's what Jorginho does best. He makes sure that the play continues. He makes sure that it moves on. He rotates possession very well. He's very press-resistant, as, as are Arsenal now. Arsenal are very good at rotating the ball and making sure that they find those correct pockets of space. Jorginho will be able to do that. As well as that, Jorginho's other role is to pick up the ball from the centre-backs and full-backs and make sure that he's able to transition Arsenal into attacking momentum. That means finding that attacking central midfielder. It means finding that winger and making sure that he can play passes up into the striker to allow them to really go forwards. This is again something that Jorginho is very good at. He can see an eye for a pass. He can understand runs. And I do think that he's been given rather a bad time about his recent performance at Chelsea. I don't think that Chelsea are moving well enough for him. I don't think they're creating enough space and I don't think they're giving Jorginho the option to be able to find enough players. Whereas at Arsenal, everything is bright, everything is fast, and everything can go through him. I think that's something that's really going to suit Jorginho as a player, and I think he's going to be able to really flourish in this Arsenal team. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think he's been going to be playing all too many games. I think that Thomas Partey will be the mainstay. Arsenal still have their main starting eleven, but if they ever need to switch out because they need rotation, because Thomas Partey might get injured, which, let's face it, he does quite a lot, Jorginho is a perfect, perfect replacement to come in and settle and steady the ship. He's a steady head who has won the Europe, <laughs> the European competitions. He's won a lot, especially at Chelsea, but also he's won a lot in terms of just himself as a player. Previously, we've seen him nominated for a Ballon d'Or, wanting to win a Ballon d'Or. It's incredibly impressive the way that he's played both in, in Italy and also for Chelsea. He is a very clever player, he's a very calm player, and he's also got another piece of winning mentality, which I think is extremely crucial for these young heads at Arsenal, who have a very, very tough time ahead of them. Don't begin thinking that Arsenal have won the league already. They haven't. Tough times are ahead. They still have to play Man City twice. And having another experienced level head like Jorginho to be able to come in and settle down this Arsenal team, especially when they need rotation, especially when they need new players, it increases the average level of that second string Arsenal team. It's not Mohamed El Nenny. You're not asking Sambi Lekonga, who I'm sure Mikel Arteta has a promise for, but also he must see that he's not quite at the level yet, which means that he needs to dip back into the market. And that's where Jorginho comes in. I think this is a very, very good move. I've seen a lot of people complain that this deal reminds them of the two deals that Arsenal did with Chelsea previously for William and David Luiz. 
I've got to say, I don't really see that. I understand the frustration. That being said, I think this deal is a little bit more measured. It's a little bit more thought out. It's a little bit more organised. And I do think that this plugs a gap that Arsenal previously would have had if Thomas Partey would have got injured. Unfortunately, Albert Sambiola Conga is just not quite ready to fit into that Arsenal team and keep the level where it needs to be. That's what I think Jorginho will do. And surely, Mikel Arteta has done enough in this season with the decisions that he has made made to warrant a little bit of backing, to warrant a little bit of trust, to warrant his ideas not always questioned. And I think that it's very funny that the trust the process method that a lot of Arsenal fans have been screaming ever since they were top of the league has really gone out of the window just because the ideals and the thought that they had doesn't align with where Mikel Arteta or Edu want to take the club. It's a stopgap approach for something that I think Arsenal saw in the future that might become an issue and if they're really plugging the holes and thinking about the future and making sure that they're covered there's nothing wrong with it 12 million pounds is not essentially too much an 18 month contract is not essentially too much and if it allows Arsenal to maintain their average level throughout the season if Thomas Partey is missing then surely it's a price worth paying. That's it for today, guys. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave the video with a like and subscribe if you haven't for more content like this coming very soon. Make sure you hit that notification bell as well because you do not want to miss what's coming up in the near future. But like I said, that's it from me for today. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, my friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.